George Matheson was the eldest of eight children born to a Glaswegian family in 1842. His ap academic ability was such that he graduated from Glasgow University with his first degree aged only 19 and then with an MA one one year later. But it was during this period that he met and fell in love with another student. They were to marry, but a medical condition was slowly causing George to lose his eyesight. Before he was 20, George was almost totally blind. Realising his disability, his fiancée broke off the engagement declaring she had no wish to be the wife of a blind man. Devastated, George never really got over this rejection and clearly it affected him deeply for many years afterwards. And like many who have suffered the trauma of losing a loved one, the memory of it can come flooding back with the same deep hurt even years later. It was in fact 20 years later, on the eve of his younger sister's wedding, that George recalled the agony of rejection because of his blindness. And in that moment, some words came to him, revealing the truth of what he was feeling. And he wrote them down straight away, words that have resulted in probably one of the most beautiful hymns of all times. O oh, love that wilt not let me go, written not from a lifetime without the one he had adored, but from a deep, comforting knowledge and intimacy that God himself had provided instead, in place of the one who once occupied his heart. George Matheson's life had, after leaving university, been given over to serving God in Scotland as a parish minister. His preaching was renowned, even impressing Queen Victoria, who had attended and listened to his message. And despite his renown, he nevertheless declined opportunities to accept more prestigious positions. Although, though he was blind, he, he wrote numerous theological books throughout his life, receiving honorary doctorates from both Edinburgh and Aberdeen Universities. He died in 1906. He was 64. He never married. The words of that hymn, which, although somewhat dated, as you would expect from that era, reveal a sense of peace and gratitude for the unfulfilled yearning that God's presence had so fully satisfied in his life. I would love to be able to play that hymn to you, uh, overlaid with the words, but that isn't possible because I'm making these videos just using my mobile phone. So why don't you uh, Google it? Google YouTube, Oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go, and watch the video. There are many different renderings on YouTube, but I particularly like the one identified by a water droplet hitting the surface of a pool of water, not only because I love the tune, but because it brings back memories of early days as a young Christian when we used to sing it in church. <laughs> 